Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Brian if you're new around here and for turning subscribers, welcome back you wonderful soul. That's what chat told me to tell you as your compliment of the day. That's what you get for subscribing to the channel. Free compliments with each video that I make and or titles. You never know what you're going to get. So hopefully you enjoy uh, the content here. So let's today set some context right now. What's happening. If you aren't aware of regarding the state of Final Fantasy 11, that's right. Final Fantasy 11 next year, 2022, they're going to be celebrating its 20th anniversary and several years ago, a couple things. This is where the conversation gets a little bit tricky to follow. Square Enix announced they were going to work on a mobile version, a remaster, a remake built on Unreal for mobile for phones. And everybody's like, like, that's especially of my generation, a millennial goes, oh, oh, that hurts. What are you talking about? But the visuals looked incredible. Anyway, that project has since been canceled. That was done, I believe, by Nexion. And they have, Square Enix has pulled it back. Yoshi P is in charge of Final Fantasy XI as well. It's under his purview, and he recently was talking about it and how it still continues to grow to this day. All right, so fast forward or rewind, I guess, a couple of years ago, they announced they're going to work on something big for Final Fantasy XI and have since started introducing new story to the game itself. Wild, right? So uh, just this year, we've been covering these interviews uh, over on wearevanadeal.finalfantasy11.com link will be in the description they've been posting interviews with key figures in final fantasy 11's 20th year history we don't yet know what the 20 year big means we don't know what it means for final fantasy 11 so i i want to try to avoid speculation and putting out false hope that it is something that we all want to happen for 11 but we'll just keep it at that now today uh i'm going to dive through this interview uh, and read along give you guys my thoughts here's the risk i'm dyslexic I think somebody said, do I absolutely, do I actively try to butcher words? And I don't, but if that frustrates you, I'm sure there's another content creator out there for you in the world. But if you're okay with my, uh, <laughs> my inability to speak sometimes, well, you're already here. You're already in the right spot. So let's go ahead and have some fun. We're filming this live, by the way, we're on uh, twitch.tv slash work game. Link is in the description. If you want to come hang out with us while we do these things live and, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and do it. Uh, Yoko uh, Yokoso Sato, Square Enix executive director, involved in various projects, including the Near series, the virtual idol groups, and Gems Company, producer of Dragon Quest X Online from the beginning of development until 2018. And he is currently the producer of Babylon's Fall, developed by Platinum Games. I'm actually really looking forward to like ba uh, Babylon's Fall, being that they talked about it as a games as a service. I'm really excited to see what that happens. Enjoying Final Fantasy XI to the point of wanting to become producer. Originally, Mr. Matsu had joined the company formerly known as Square, and Mr. Sato had joined the company formerly known as Annex. The two companies have merged since then, but how are you acquainted? In terms of meeting in person, I think that we dined out together a few times around when Mr. Matsu took over as Final Fantasy XI producer. Truth be told, I wanted to be the producer of Final Fantasy XI. Really? But I have strong feelings towards XI, so I doubt I would get any work done if I became the producer. Uh, anything from you, Mr. Matsu? Back when Square Enix merged in 2013, I don't know why I said 13, 20, uh, 2003, I was still an underling in my understanding and that it was Mr. Sato was a similar position to the company as Mr. Tanaka, uh, who we just covered all the interviews here previously on the channel. You can guys go check that out if you want. Uh, I would say I was nervous about approaching him. When my wife and I began playing World of Warcraft, Mr. Sato told me that we have a Square Enix guild and uh, invited me to his guild. I don't think we were actually ever playing together, but from what I've heard of the guild, Mr. Sato seemed very friendly and also very busy. And I got the impression that he was fully devoted to both work and to gaming. If you guys aren't aware, World of Warcraft is a massively online role-playing game that's really struggling right now. And it's unfortunate. And hopefully all that stuff gets justified and fixed. Sato says, the WoW Guild, as led uh, by Sage Sunday, uh, Final Fantasy XI's global online producer at the time, and other members included Bakko. Uh, and... Yoko Gusawa. Uh, we did hardcore raiding with the members of that guild, but as a tank of the group, I sometimes got angry with the DPS members and they made mistakes. But for the most part, I recall us playing together harm uh, harmoniously. I hadn't reached max level yet, so I did join. I didn't join in for the raids, but we just went about on my many adventures and greeted fellow guild members whenever we bumped into each other. It sounds like Mr. Sato is the type of person to really get absorbed into something. 
Yes, and I completely got absorbed since the start of the game. Once I talked about the game all the time, and people might say, do you even work at all? Well, it is a part of your job. <laughs> My job can uh, be fairly busy, but I guess just like games, recently I've been playing Monster Hunter Rise. But I was a Hunter rank 200 before I knew it. When Monster Hunter Rise was re uh, was released, I had my hands full to release a Nier Replicant and Operations for Nier Incarnation. So I figured it was a bad time to start a new game and put it off for a while. Then things settled down and I felt like I was ready and it was okay to start playing. And I played the Gathering Hub quest on my own, but before I knew it, I ended up at my current rank. Those of you who are currently playing Monster Hunter Rise probably never imagined that Mr. Sato could be one of those hardcore hunters in your gathering hub. Next, I'd like to ask Mr. Sato's experiences with Eleven, and from what I've heard, we've been playing Final Fantasy XI since the day it was released. And technically, there it was since the day of release. On the first day of service, I couldn't connect to play online, so I contacted Square Enix customer support, but they couldn't reach them either. That feels so true. I had uh, to go to work, so I gave up logging in that day, and I finally made it to Vanadil. I think I was maybe two or three days later. At the time, we were already involved with game development at Enix, but you were keeping an eye on Eleven. Well, around that time, I was looking at an online PC game called Crossgate, and there weren't many bar MMOs at the time, so I was amazed to see a game in the genre as a series significantly as Final Fantasy, and it just had to try it out. My feelings of, I need to play it for work, were maybe like 20%, whereas 80% of it was personal interest. Well, was that, uh, what was it like when you played Eleven? I was the leader of a link shell, which was mainly for small talk, but I also did, uh, in Ginger, I, I can never say that, uh, with some of our uh, members, and I was interested in in-game content. I was also with my friends link shell, and they did Dynamis every Wednesday. So when around were you playing? I was playing pretty much every day up until Treasures of Aragat, I think I only played a little bit of the Wings of the Goddess, and it was partly because I was busy with work, but also because I was simultaneously playing World of Warcraft, where I was responsible for tanking, and I felt like I had to choose one game over the other and begin focusing on a World of Warcraft. Juggling multiple MMORPGs is tough, especially with how games were back then, and I don't think I could ever do it. While it all was going on, Dragon Quest X's online project began, but I still want to get back to into Eleven. I really spent a long time in Vanadil, and I, in the scenery like that of Sada, uh, Sada Baruta uh, and the uh, ferry ride between Maharada and Selbina still come up in my dreams, by the way. This may be a because I played as a Tataru, uh, but I really like Shantoto, and to the point where Shantoto's table's clock adorned my bathroom sink. To this day, I've always wanted an opportunity to return to Vanadil. You were a Tataru and a fan of Shantoto, so I take it you're from Windurst. That's right. So what job did you play? Back when the game launched, I was one of those black mages who only used white magic spells, but magic burst uh, hunting with ancient magic became the norm. I was really glad I was a black mage, figuring out when a skill chain was going off so I would occur timing my spells with a long cast times, so that was a lot of fun. That's impressive. It takes skill to magic burst with ancient magic. So when I was playing solo, I also t uh, liked taking monsters out after inhibiting them with sleep and bind. Hunting war muggers at Mount Zamal was quite popular. <laughs> Through a single mistake, you uh, meant that you wiped out. As a beastmaster, I could also be used the crab missiles strategy uh, with w with that w one two, you'd wipe out of a charm if the charm failed. I can tell you, and then we're really into the game. I can tell you we're really into the game. It helps if I can learn to read. We'll get there. We'll get there. I also used the Sky NMs as a bit of CNM Sky NMs were the routine for us. So there was always something like Tulua wherever I logged in. They'd let you know when the NM spawned, and the rest of us would rush to their aid. And of course, we defeated Kieran. So, Sky NMs collectively refers to the Kirin and other notorious monsters in the Tolua region, and CNMs collectively refers to the Absolute Virtue and other notorious monsters in the Lumora region, for those of you who don't know. Uh, Matsu, you were a black mage then too? I believe so, but I think I remember leveling up the other jobs. Could it be that you also had Matt's cap? I'm not sure about Matt's cap, but I do like this brings back a lot of memories, like falling off the narrow path numerous times and when climbing. Uh, Power Tomorrow, uh, Tor, and Atawa Chasm. 
Some of the names, I swear, I, they do this to me on purpose. I've always, I've always believed that. And going all the way up to Urlergrind range to try the side down to the cave. There were times, <laughs> I hope people watch these just to watch me struggle, uh, times where I was incapacitated by attacking monsters, but none of them were bitter memories. And I truly had a lot of fun. Some out there might say, eh, you probably didn't play all that much, but I did play a fair amount. And I even used to edit my Link Shells wiki. I never had, uh, would have guessed that you had edited the wiki. I'd imagine it'd be difficult for the developers to play to this degree in their private time, wouldn't it, Mr. Matsu? That's true. Even if we finished working on a version update, the next one was already lined up, and it's hard to settle down and play when you feel things need to be done. There are so many things that we want to refine, as well as NMs and equipment uh, that we want to add, and each of those tasks were given a priority and handled one by one. So when we played, we were still in work mode the whole time. That's how things are for developers. We often hear about events that developers are pit against hardcore players, but there's no way developers can win. Even if we understand the logic or how that weak points are, whether we can make the effective use of the information is another matter. A lot of practice and muscle memory is required, so it's not something that you can pull off immediately. Even then, it's amazing how our memories of Anna Deal are coming back as our conversation goes on. When our memories of real life 15 years ago are completely vague by now, I must have been a marvelous experience. In reality, it is amazing. The ages of our Link Show members were quite varied, and I think that many have been uh, the oldest. No, there was a, even a CEO of some company. It must have been the second oldest. And on the other hand, we had members that were still in high school. If our members were all students in the same class, I couldn't have been such an exciting school life. By the way, did your Link Show members know about your occupation? Generally, I didn't tell them. Our Link Show began with only Annex employees, and then we all knew each other in real life. From there, we gradually gained more members as we invited the people to befriend that we befriended in game, but we never really needed to reveal who we were. With that being said, had they discovered you all uh, were from the company that makes Dragon Quests, <laughs> a few of them were aware of who we were, but I think that most of them didn't know. I'm sure that particularly in a generational thing, but nowadays it's no longer rare to communicate in in-game friends over social media or interact with them in real life. Many players even use voice chat while they play, and I feel that, that the closeness between players is completely different compared to 20 years ago. There was a lot of nervousness back then, but it's not like we had zero connections outside the game. There were people we met in offline gatherings, and maybe two uh, couples of our Link show got married, though they had been more than <laughs> I wasn't aware of. We had used to be more cautious about connecting with people in real life, but on the other hand, I feel like our in-game communication was a tight-knit group. With the evolution of systems like automated matchmaking allowing us to play more lightheartedly, meetings between players are now more like one-offs. The memories of Final Fantasy XI deeply ingrained in our players and may be a result of the strong bonds that they had with other games. Speaking of Link Show members, there was a Final Fantasy XI player in the Dragon Quest Online development team, and after listening to their stories, they turned out to be a member of the same Link Shell. And I went something like, wait, Mr. Sato, you were X character name? I was X character name. This might have been the biggest surprise we ever, ever had related to Final Fantasy XI. I'm generally uncommon that a fellow member of the Link Shell turns out to be someone you know in real life. Absolutely. They were somewhere we invited without knowing their real life identity and that they were a Square Enix employee at the time. They joined the Dragon Quest XI online team as part of that through that project. Where's the Link Show with Square Enix employees? Or was there a Link Show with Square Enix employees? Well, I'm not sure that there was a Link Show. On the last day of the beta test, there was a feature where you could choose your world at launch based off the final digits of the gill you had on hand. A few of us were trying to cooperate or coordinate together to join the same world, so a certain world may have had a quite a few of the Square Enix employees. The next part of this will be available on August the 11th. The uh, before they had the Golden Pass, like it was try, it was a, it was they wanted like to randomly distribute everybody, so it was really hard to try to get on. You had to get somebody to get a Golden Pass back in the day to get somebody like to actually join your server. Because otherwise it was just like it was like jumping through all these hoops to see if you end up getting on the same server. Now they just let you pick, which is really nice. I think that was overall a really good change. I, I really can't wait to see what the next year entails. I, I hope that it's something really that what the community really wants. It's crazy to think that the game is still going and wonderful to see the game still going and, and still growing. I think there's a lot of things that they could do to kind of really help bring that about. 
And I think one of those, and I've said this numerous times, is to combine the Final Fantasy 14 and 11 subscriptions together. That way we can literally like just, yeah, just play the game you want to play and bounce between the two. You want to take a break for 14? Waiting for new content? Guess what? Final Fantasy 11 is there waiting for you. I, it would be really cool also to see communication between the two games when you start talking about a universal like character and, and friends list and things like that. Like all of a sudden that becomes something much, much more viable in terms of communication and, and connection and grouping and things like that. But I think that takes a lot more work than any of us are willing to admit in the long run. Anyway, guys, that wraps it up for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you did hit that like button, if you didn't hit that dislike button, be sure to let me know in the comments what you think, what you're excited about for and overall what you think about these interviews. I look forward to hearing your opinions. But for Ginger Prime, my name is Brian. Thank you so much for watching. Have a fantastic day. I'll see you in my next one. Hopefully. Take care.